Hi, welcome back to AI and the Human Connection. Did you know that more than one in five adults in the U.S. experience mental illness each year? According to the National Institute of Mental Health, almost 58 million people experienced mental illness in 2021. That's a very high number, isn't it? Important to note here also is the fact that young adults between 18 and 25 years old had the highest prevalence of any mental illness uh, compared to other adults. Could artificial intelligence be part of the solution? Well, for that first, let's define what mental health is. According to the World Health Organization, it is a state of mental well-being that enables us to cope with the stresses of life, realize our abilities, uh, learn well and work well, and contribute to our community. It's a basic human right, just like life, liberty, and freedom of expression. But despite this uh, importance, only half of the people who needed mental health support actually received it. Why is it crucial to seek mental health support? According to uh, Lyra, untreated mental health conditions can have far-reaching effects. For example, um, increased risk of illnesses such as diabetes or cancer, shorter life expectancy, loss of income, higher rates of disability and unemployment, lower overall life satisfaction. As AI rises in healthcare, we're also witnessing its growing use for mental health support. Many people are already using chatbots, virtual therapists, and other means. But the question remains, to what extent and at what cost? What are the pros and cons? Stay with me as we delve into these questions together. Uh, I will mention a few uh, AI chatbots. Uh, one of them is called Wobot. It offers various types of therapy for adults, adolescents, and maternal health, and it is free. Another app is called WISA, a coach for depression, stress, anxiety, sleep, and other wellness needs. And it costs about $100 per month or per year, depending on what type of services you receive. Youper, a CBT therapy chatbot with premium plans up to about $70. And MindDoc, a screening and monitoring tool for those with depression, anxiety, insomnia, and eating disorders. What are some of the benefits of these apps? Uh, first, the accessibility. You're, you can access to your virtual therapist 24-7, uh, you know, anytime in your smartphone. Uh, you have an access with a few clicks without having to find a therapist, drive to the therapist's office, dedicate several hours of your busy day. And when considering the fact that almost half of the U.S. population lives in areas lacking adequate mental health professionals, accessibility becomes a huge issue. And it is even worse in rural areas and economically disadvantaged cities. Another benefit is anonymity. As you know, there is stigma around seeking mental health support, unfortunately. Some see it as something to be ashamed of. Some fear that others can discriminate against them, label them, and that they can lose their job, they can lose their prestige or status if it is known by others. Another uh, thing to mention here is the uh, insurance, which is a big issue. Only one third of uh, uh, psychiatrists accept new patients with Medicaid. And uh, the underrepresented segments of the society, they cannot always find mental health professionals that they can feel connected culturally or uh, linguistically. One advantage is cost with these apps. Receiving mental health care is not affordable for everyone especially for people with low income or those who do not have insurance. Uh, an average uh, therapy session in the United States costs between $100 and $200. Uh, and these apps obviously are much more uh, affordable than that. 
okay, these are the benefits. Now, how about the potential drawbacks of these apps? One, uh, well, mistakes and misdiagnosis. What happens if your chatbot therapist misdiagnoses you? Who will be responsible? The chatbot? The company that designed the chatbot? So there is the issue of accountability. Another thing is over-reliance on technology and missing the human element. For instance, would you feel cared for by an app on your phone? Can you establish a deeper therapeutic relationship with it? And if, if so, would that be a healthy attachment or not? Uh, AI cannot fully replicate the empathy, the compassion, and nuanced understandings of human therapists. One other concern is the data privacy. Uh, protecting personal health information is one of the top priorities always in healthcare. With these apps, who has access to my personal data and how is it used? We need to ensure that the users have informed consents in these types of apps. And one other concern is the bias. Uh, algorithms that these AI apps use have been trained on the existing data, which is already biased because human beings are biased. So it can perpetuate or actually exacerbate existing bi bi biases against a certain uh, racial, religious, or cultural identity. As we have seen, AI holds great promise in transforming mental health care, offering accessibility, affordability, and early intervention tools. However, we must also approach this technology with caution, addressing concerns about accuracy, privacy, bias, and the irreplaceable value of human connection. It is important to remember that AI should be viewed as a tool to enhance, not replace, the invaluable work of mental health professionals. By fostering collaboration between humans and AI, and by prioritizing ethical considerations, we can harness the power of technology to improve the lives of millions struggling with mental health challenges. I encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences with AI in mental health in the comments below. Uh, let's have an open and honest conversation about this evolving landscape and how we can ensure that technology serves our well-being and not the other way around. Thank you for watching. See you next week.